Hi and welcome. Today we are going to look at marginal productivity, also under calculus of multivariable functions. That was the economic application of it. Okay. So let's take this question. Consider the production function q is equal to into bracket 0.3 x exponent negative 3 plus 0.7 y exponent negative 3 all exponents negative 1 over 3. Where Q is output, X is what? Capital input and Y is labor input. So they said find A, marginal product of capital. B, marginal product of labor. C, find an expression for MRTS and D, find a slope of the isoquant when X is equal to 4 and Y is equal to 8. So let's see how to do this. Now, to do this, A says we should find a marginal product of capital. To get a marginal product of capital, what it means is that we should differentiate Q. Since Q is equal to this, we should differentiate Q with respect to what? Uh, with respect to X. Because according to the question, X is capital and Y is what? Labor, isn't it? So meaning we should differentiate Q with respect to X. So if we differentiate Q with respect to X, it means we are finding marginal product of capital, isn't it? So marginal product of capital is equal to partial derivative of Q with respect to X. Are you following? Partial derivative of what? Of Q with respect to S gives us MPK, marginal product of capital. So that will give us what? Now, if you are differentiating this with respect to X, are you with me? You are going to use the chain rule for this, okay? But since you are not new to this course, okay, we don't have time to be doing that step, to be doing it step by step. So, you should know that whenever you are differentiating something, okay, you use the exponents, okay? What I've done here is told this chain rule, just I didn't go through it step by step. You use the exponent, which is negative 1 over 3, to multiply the entire thing. Okay, that's why I brought it here. Then into bracket, since we are differentiating with respect to x, you differentiate what is inside the bracket with respect to x. Are you following? So to differentiate what is in the bracket with respect to x, are you with me? You have negative 3 here. When you use the negative 3 to multiply, uh, 0 0.3 you have negative 3 times 0 0.3 isn't it times x exponent negative 3 minus 1 you have to subtract 1 from the exponent after multiplying it with the coefficient of the x but since we are differentiating with respect to x there is no x term in this one so it becomes 0 i follow there's no x here so it becomes 0 so you have that in bracket then you repeat what you had this you repeat it and now subtract one from its exponent. If you know this short way of doing it, you don't have you don't have to waste time in doing this. Let me give you an example. When you have two a plus, uh, let's say um, y is equal to two a plus three b all exponent two. Are you with me? Instead of you applying the chain rule. Though we are still applying the chain rule, okay. But instead of you writing uh, let u be this, let you can go straight forward to find let's say you are differentiating y with respect to a, okay. With respect to a, you can go straight forward to differentiate with respect to a by saying that what the exponent times this you first bring the exponent, then use it to multiply. Now, you go inside the bracket and differentiate with respect to A, since you are doing with A. So when you differentiate with respect to A, you get a 2, isn't it? You only go inside the bracket, okay, to do that, to differentiate with respect to A. So you get 2, okay, times, then you repeat what you had, like 2A plus 3B exponent 2, but you, you now subtract 1 from the exponent. Exponent 2. Then you now subtract one from the exponent. This is a short way of doing it. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. You, you bring this, then you differentiate what is inside the bracket. 
okay with respect to x you first bring the exponent okay then you differentiate what is inside the bracket with respect to x differentiating this with respect to s you have negative 3 times 0 0.3 x exponent negative 3 minus 1 okay then you repeat what you had here but now you subtract one from each exponent as well so that's what i've done here as an example as a sample so if you simplify this further you are going to have a negative 1 over 3 times this negative 3 gives you positive 1 isn't it times 0 0.3 x exponent negative 4 because negative 3 minus 1 gives you negative 4, isn't it? Then, this repeats. Then, negative 1 over 3 minus 1 gives you negative 1 and uh, 4 over 3, okay? So, you are going to have this as your... 1 times this remains the same. So, 0 0.3x exponent negative 4 times 0.3x exponent negative 3 plus 0.7y exponent negative 3. All exponents, what? Negative 4 over 3. This exponent is only affecting this one this is not part are you following yeah so the next thing is so we've been able to differentiate this okay this is the marginal product of uh, capital so this is it so this is the final answer okay so this is the marginal product of capital so let's look at the second question that says we should find a marginal product of labor so to get a marginal product of labor b so it means this time around we are finding a partial derivative of q with respect to y because labor stands for y isn't it so mpl is equal to partial derivative of q with respect to y okay so to do that you apply same method here too you use the exponent you bring the exponent first are you getting me when you bring the exponent first then you come inside the bracket okay when you enter the bracket, you differentiate, are you with me? You differentiate with respect to y only inside the bracket. You first bring the exponent here, then you differentiate with respect to y only inside the bracket. So let's differentiate this with respect to y only. This cannot be done, this will become zero because there's no any y here. But when you come here, there's a y here, right? So you use negative 3 to multiply what? 0 0.7. So that's what we have here negative 3 times 0 0.7 y exponent is not an x it's y okay pardon me for that okay y exponent negative 3 minus 1 you now subtract 1 from the exponent okay so negative 3 minus 1 y 0 0.7 y exponent negative 3 you now subtract 1 from the exponent okay so you repeat this and subtract one from each exponent as well. Okay. Then, so negative 1 over 3 times negative 3 gives you what? Positive 1, isn't it? Then times 0 0.7 y exponent negative 4. It's not x. It's a typing mistake. Okay. y exponent negative 4. Okay. y exponent negative 4. Then y exponent negative 4 then you repeat this so negative 1 over 3 minus 1 gives you negative 4 over 3 is that not so uh, is that not so so when you simplify further you have 0 0.7 y exponent negative 4 isn't it negative uh, you have 0 0.7 y exponent negative 4 times this i hope you are following so that's what you get when you find the marginal product of labor okay 0 0.7 y exponent negative 4. I hope that's clear. So let's proceed to the next one. The next one says, find an expression for MRTS. Now, MRTS means marginal rate of technical substitution and it's equal to MPL over MPK. Okay, marginal product of labor divided by marginal product of capital. Okay, so what was the marginal product of labor? It was 0.7y exponent negative 4 times 0.3x exponent negative 3 plus 0.7y exponent negative 3 all exponent negative 4 over 3 right divided by what was the marginal product of capital from what we solve in a the marginal product of capital was 0.3x exponent negative 4 multiplying 0.3x exponent negative 1 plus 0.7y exponent negative 3 all exponents were negative 4 over 3 isn't it so from here you realize that 
this is the same as this isn't it so if they are the same meaning this cancel itself once and go here also one times so this takes away this this cancel this i following so if this cancel this you have what 0.7 y exponent neg negative 4 divided by 0.3 x exponent negative 4 so that's the answer okay but you can choose to simplify this further if you want to simplify this further you have 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.3 times y exponent negative 4 divided by x exponent negative 4 now if you go back to your law of indices okay or principles of indices whenever you have a exponent negative 1 or let's say a exponent negative 2 over uh, let's say b exponent negative 3 okay it can become b exponent 3 over a exponent 2 to take away the negative reciprocate them the negatives will go away if one of them was not having a negative and we reciprocate them the one that wasn't having a negative should now contain a negative do you get it so they both have negative okay okay someone will be wondering like what is the logic behind that okay the logic behind it is that when you have y exponent negative 4 it means 1 over y exponent 4 isn't it we said this uh, 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.3 gives you 7 over 3 and I told you to reciprocate this it gives you x exponent 4 divided by y exponent 4 do you get it but the reason is let me prove it to you y exponent negative 4 means 1 over y over 4 isn't it divided by you have this division okay divided by x exponent negative 4 also means 1 over x exponent 4 1 over x exponent 4 so if that is the case to take away this division you are going to have 1 over y exponent 4 times x exponent 4 over 1 x exponent 4 over 1 so 1 times x exponent 4 gives you what it gives you x exponent 4 isn't it divided by y exponent 4 times 1 gives you what y exponent 4 so that is the reason okay it's not just something we are imposing on it that you should do it like that but this is what led to that but because you are mathematics students like they expect you to know that and just apply it quickly and go so that gives you 7x exponent 4 divided by 3y exponent 4 okay so that is mrts so what's the next question the next question says find the slope of the iso quant when x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 8 so to do that you only bring the the function y uh, x 7x exponent 4 divided by 3y exponent 4 then you substitute since x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 8 so wherever you see x you put 4 there wherever you see y you put 8 there so if you simplify this you get 1792 divided by 120 uh, uh, 12288 isn't it yeah and when you simplify it further when you use your calculator you can get the most simplified answer okay you can get a simplified answer 7 over 7 over 48 okay and that gives you 0 0.1458 or 0 0.15 okay so that is the slope of the isoquant so that is the end of this lesson and thank you for watching can you sh share this with your friends and let them also watch and see how it goes